How does media affect society's view on gender and stereotypes? Gina Davis is the founder of the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media. Here's a short clip from Tell Your Story. When my daughter Alizé was maybe two, I mean, she'd watch Baby Einstein and things like that, but um, I decided, hey, maybe I can start showing her G-rated videos and uh, little kids' TV shows. And uh, the very first thing I put on was a, a kid's TV show. And I immediately noticed that there seemed to be far more male characters than female characters. When I was counting on my fingers, like, could this be possible in something that's made for the youngest, youngest kid? And especially in G and PG rated uh, videos. And I just started asking friends about it. No one had noticed until I pointed it out. And then they'd be, oh my God, oh my God, you're right. The fictitious worlds that are being created for the littlest kids from the very beginning are nearly bereft of female presence. There's going to be some important lead character, an important female character, but the world is not populated with uh, a female presence so that whether it's, you know, a kingdom under seas or outer space colony or animals in the woods that, that talk, they're just not seeing female characters. I'm in the industry. I know everybody. Maybe I'll just bring this up uh, if I have a meeting with somebody. I would say, hey, have you ever noticed how few female characters there are in uh, G-rated movies? And every single person said, oh, no, 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 that's been fixed. And they were very sincere about it. There wasn't anybody who said, eh, that's not a problem, it's been fixed, don't worry about it. They were like, we care about girls here, we work very hard at our studio, production company, whatever. Here's the proof. And they would often name a movie with one female character as proof. Movie after movie comes out that, that we want to say, well, now, now, now things have changed. But it doesn't, is because the powers that be are still saying, yeah, but I don't know, that might have just been a one-off. Want to step to the back of the car, please? I decided, well, maybe there's research about this. There wasn't any. Nobody had ever studied it before. Children's films have been illustrating male dominance in the working class role while females are mainly considered to take care of the house and children. Not only in kids' films, but teenager and adult films, women are portrayed in a stereotypical and negative way. Gina Davis discussed how the ratio of male to female actors and actresses has a broad gap. As the founder of Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media, she has exemplified the misconceptions our media, and specifically films, have produced. In the interview, she touches upon how when the subject is brought up, people say the male-to-female ratio doesn't exist anymore. They go on to say movies like The Hunger Games as an example where a woman is portrayed as a warrior and not as a caretaker. But Gina's trying to interest this overall importance of the image of equality, that it shouldn't be in a few movies, but it should be in all of them. With the addition of different genres and ratings, the extent of the stereotypes lengthens. But the key focus is our youth are subject to these images that women are inferior when in reality, males and females are equal. Producers stand by and form these roles of women because it will be favored more and politics ties into it. It's hard to establish what is worse, the male or female ratio or the image that is being brainwashed into future generations. Gina Davis is one of the many and the few who are still in the fight for justice for women in the present and throughout history. The next clip is an experiment involving four-year-olds who are given a male and female doll. They are asked a series of questions, and based on what the media has taught them, they will point to one doll that they believe would correctly answer the question. Young children appear to begin to acquire gender role stereotypes at about the same time that they develop gender identity. And by the age of three or four, most children, when asked questions about the activities appropriate for a male doll and a female doll, readily give stereotypic responses. Which doll likes to clean the house? This one. Who takes care of the babies? <laughs> this time. Who goes to work? <laughs> this way. In the experiment, it is distinctly clear where the media is at fault, specifically using films. The stereotypical image of both males and females are present. It is horrifying how the preschoolers identify cleaning and child roles only associated with the female doll. 
and the male doll for the one that goes to work. Both dolls apply to the questions asked and not just one. This is representation of the youth learning from a film's definition of the role or purpose of a gender in a household. As young children, we learn to speak and walk, but just of how foundational those are, gender roles should be also instilled correctly side by side with those essentials. If the future youth grow with the foundation of gender stereotypes as a norm, how will we bring change? In majority of teenage films, there is a constant sense of stereotype towards females with the foundation of male dominance. There is a dependency towards male characters by female characters because according to the media, male characters provide intelligence about themselves while females struggle with basic necessities. Also, there is a similar form of click style when referring to teenage stereotypes because the media has constantly formed these groups and labeled them. There's the good girl, the girl next door, the rich girl, the cheerleader, the gothic, and the mean girl. All forms of stereotypes that we still see present in teenage films since the 70s. For example, the movie Mean Girls is the perfect representation of this phenomenon where each of the cliques are present. Films that share these concepts are generalizing women and installing an ideology in female teenagers that beauty is more important than intelligence. With the increase of age comes with the lengthening of gender stereotyping in films from young children to teenagers. The gap is very broad. This is because ratings have distinguished how far the media can set the norms based on age. Young children learn to distinguish genders based on the role in the household, while teenagers learn how girls form groups based on intelligence and beauty. The gap from teenagers to adults isn't that wide because the cliques present in teenage films are also in adult films. Adult films differ from teenage films because of the, the rating they get, which is 17 plus based on age. The increased rating is not only the change we see, but how provocative films uh, attack women's beauty as lustful which will somehow correlate back to the lack of intelligence. Female actresses typically take passive roles that are dependent on the concept of the male gaze, which can be described as the angle of the camera that is in the scene because it illustrates females as objects of the desire. Actresses on camera are viewed through the eyes of the actor in the scene, either in a positive or negative way. This concept is not only sexist but heinous and how the lustful thoughts of the male character could be classified as a norm. But if a woman thought lustfully about a man, it would be considered slutty and frowned upon. The double standard is another principle, a part of the change of 2017, that must occur on a basis of humanity. Each film that stereotypes women uses a single adjective to describe the female character. The film will then circumference around that single word. The word genre is primarily used to differ an action from a comedy film, but for films that stereotype women, they only really differ because of a single personality trait. Some examples of the real genres of these types of movies are materialistic, desperate, broken, stupid, and psychotic. In our current day and age, women are portrayed through these films as sensitive, unintelligent, and aggressive human beings because the media has created a gender superiority of males over females. Because of this creation, male characters do not have films based on a nearly as negative level, but as positive or merely passed off as one. Male characters in comedies are considered stupid, but when our media does it to women, they're not only targeting the character in the film, but women in general. It's 2017, people. Gender equality should be omnipresent. Women have dealt with this categorization as caretakers throughout history. It's the 21st century. It's a time for change, and change we will.